not drawing the product. If you want, you can go through the whole mechanism, but that might take a while. If you want, you can try to just jump straight to the product. mechanism? Well, this is that radical allylic halogenation that we were just talking about. All right, we know that in the mechanism, this is going to create bromines um, that will then, uh, and then we're going to take a hydrogen off and replace it with a bromine. All right, so this is our normal allylic halogenation. Let's write what the product would be here. And again, if you want, you can try to go through the whole mechanism, but this is one of the, the main reactions you learned last term, so you should also be able to just go straight to the product. Any idea what the product would look like here? Or if you want, you can try to draw the mechanism. Is it the same product? Yeah. Actually, this will be different. Yeah, that's right. This is one of the reactions you learned last term. Remember that you did a whole big unit on alkene addition reactions. Lots and lots of different alkene addition reactions. One of the things that you can add to an alkene is uh, Br2, or Cl2, a halogen. This is just a halogenation. Uh, and both of the bromines add up adding to the different carbons. The, the, the middle one is going to be wedged and dashed, right? That's true. Okay. You could, uh, yeah, well, there's no point putting in wedges yeah, and dashes here because it's not a stereo center. It. It's good that you're thinking about that. Those are, I, those are the ones that just get. Yeah, it's yeah, it's very important to be in the habit of thinking about the stereo chemistry. All right, so this is forming a stereo center, um, and um, since we're attacking something that's flat, the bromine can come in from either direction, so it can uh, end up on either a wedge or a dash. All right, well, I wanted to put these both on the board at the same time because oftentimes students end up confusing these two reactions. Um, if you want to do radical allylic halogenation, you use NBS. If you want to do a halogenation of an alkene, you use Br2. This is a reaction we learned last term. This is a new reaction, although it's really just an extension of radical halogenation from last term. The reason you can get them confused is they both work on the same starting material. Both of these work on the same starting material. Um, but this attacks the double bond, and this attacks the allylic carbon. That would be a good thing to have in your notes. This is attacking the allylic carbon, and this is destroying the double bond. So notice that if we use NBS, the double bond survives, because it's not getting attacked. But if we use Br2, the double bond gets destroyed. And I know this, was not, this is a, not a new reaction from this term, but you can expect on the exam that there's, the instructor is still going to be using some of these key reactions from last term as well. Um, so that you, to make sure that you know the difference between that and the new reactions. Now remember that actually, when we looked at the mechanism, we saw that NBS does produce Br2 as part of its mechanism. But the key thing is, if you only produce a small amount of Br2 at a time, that tends to favor the radical mechanism. Whereas if you just dump in a whole um, bunch of Br2, that tends to favor the addition reaction. So the reason why we use, the whole reason why we use this to get the radical mechanism is that NBS delivers just a small amount of Br2 at a time. That's one reason why you might have thought they were giving the same reaction because they both have Br2. But this is delivering only a small amount of Br2, which it just so happens favors the radical mechanism. Thank you. And let's do one more. We should actually draw the mechanism for this reaction. This is another key reaction from last term that you're still going to be seeing. Let's actually draw the mechanism for this one. This is a very important mechanism. Does the hydrogen from here go to the bromine? Uh, Possibly. That is not what happens. Let's go do that together. Well, first of all, 
do double bonds tend to act like nucleophiles or electrophiles? I mean carbon-carbon double bonds. Well, we saw last term that carbon-carbon double bonds tend to be a tails of arrows. That's why when you studied alkenes, you were learning about um, electrophilic addition. Car Carbon-carbon double bonds tend to get attacked by electrophiles because they tend to be nucleophiles. That's just something we have to memorize. So I'm going to put this double bond at the tail of an arrow, not at the head of an arrow. Carbon-carbon pi bonds go at tails of arrows, unless you have a good reason otherwise. By the way, this is not going to be a radical mechanism. This is not a radical mechanism. You know, we, we don't learn many radical mechanisms in this course. Um, this is just about the only radical mechanism you'll see this whole term. Everything else, remember radical mechanisms are the one with the single-headed arrows, the fish hooks. Pretty much everything we are looking at is a non-radical mechanism with a double-headed arrow. So that's what we're going to have here. Well, the only thing that's left to do is to figure out who should go at the head, the hydrogen or the bromine. Well, who's the better candidate? Which of these would be electrophilic? Well, who wants to receive electrons? Someone with a positive charge. And it's the hydrogen that has the delta positive charge. This is a technique that unfortunately not enough students use. It's very useful for figuring out who's going to be the electrophile, assign the partial charges. The partial charges can be a big help in telling who's going to be the electrophile and who's going to be the nucleophile. We've simply memorized that carbon-carbon pi bonds are nucleophiles, but we can figure out that this hydrogen is a good electrophile. And then this has to be the leading group. So I'll attach the hydrogen over here and put this carbocation over here. So this one's going to be two steps to do with the bromine, just like loop over. That's right. Okay. That's right. Um, first we form the carbocation. Now the bromine is going to come in. Well, this step should make very good sense. This has a negative charge, so it's acting like the nucleophile, and this has a positive charge. And this gives us our final product. This is not a stereo center, so we don't need to. Yeah, that's right. Got it. So there's no stereochemistry for this particular example that I put on the board. Now, how did I know that the hydrogen would end up here and leave the positive charge on this carbon rather than the hydrogen attaching here, which would put the positive charge over here? Yeah, that was one of the big themes from last term, right? We want the more substituted carbocation. So theoretically, the carbocation can end up either here or here, but it much prefers to be on the more substituted carbon. In fact, primary carbocations you really can't make. That was why when you learned this last term, um, well, actually, your instructor doesn't make a big deal about this, but this is called a Markovnikov addition. Your instructor doesn't like that term. Yeah. All right. But anyway, they did make a big deal. He did make a big deal about the fact that in this reaction, the bromine ends up on the more substituted carbon. Um, and why? Because that's where the carbocation is. So that's the regiochemistry of this reaction. All right, so now we have three reactions that students tend to get confused that it would be good to have all in your notes. Three different ways that bromine can attack an atom with a double bond. NBS is allylic halogenation, which preserves the double bond because it attacks the allylic carbon. BR2 destroys the double bond by adding the two BRs. And HBr also destroys the double bond by adding the H and the BR. Um, and this is going to put the bromine on the more substituted carbon. So it's important not to get these reactions confused. This is the only radical mechanism. All right. These videos are offered on a pay-what-you-like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos at my website. There's a link to my website in the info box. The address is www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos dot htm or you can just use the link in the info box thank you